Hi, you guys. I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing. Today, I want to talk to you about the big problem with shorting in the stock market. So as virtually everybody in the world knows by now, GameStop, which is the retailer for, you know, video games, and was having trouble making the transition into the cloud era for video games um, from physical product, was shorted a few months ago massively, causing major financial consequences for certain hedge funds and some very large losses for these guys, these pro investors. Just a classic, amazing part of the revolution of information that's going on on the internet for financial literacy is so amazing and so cool in a way. Um, regulators got involved. It was all scary for the federal government. And it was really just, I was just fascinated by the whole thing. So let's talk a little bit about what, what is shorting, you know, what is that? And what are, why does it create problems? And how do you get your butt handed to you if you're a superstar investor running a major head fund with $11 billion in it? How, how do a bunch of yo-yos on a, on a website hand you your butt? That, that's classic. So let's cover all that today. All right, so first of all, um, shorting a stock is pretty straightforward. It, it is essentially the idea that you're you're basically betting that the stock price is going to come down. And the way that that works essentially is that after the stock price drops as a short seller, you step in and buy it. And the way you profit is that you begin this. This is a trade. You begin the trade by borrowing the stock originally from the broker. So you borrow the stock and then you have the broker sell it immediately. So let's say the stock is priced at $100 a share. The broker is selling that stock and holding the $100. And what you owe the broker is you owe him the shares. So you're going to wait. Hopefully the stock goes down to $50 and you buy the stock at 50. You hand the stock back to the broker. He hands you your $100. You just double your money. So that's that's the essence of of shorting the stock. Um, now, you got to factor in a couple of things. You're going to pay some interest because you borrowed something. If you're doing this on margin, which many people do, you, you're, you're going to have a broker come and say, you got to put more money in here from time to time. Um, but in, and in general, you, you are going to be in a little more sophisticated era of the investing world when you're shorting stocks. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about what exactly happened there with the GameStop thing. You had a bunch of professionals look at this company and say, this company is terminal. It's not going to succeed. OK, and so if you really believe that and you're a pro, what you might do is borrow a load of money called margin and you might take all this borrowed money and you might tell that broker, I want you to go out there and borrow as much of this GameStop stock as you can borrow a ton of it. And then you, having borrowed it, they sell off this stuff. Now you've got to put up money in order to be able to have them do that because they're not just going to do it for nothing, right? You got to have capital in your account. So they sell the stock and they're holding this stock. Let's say they sell it at, um, I don't know, $13 a share. Let's just say $13 a share. And you just know this company's going down to zero. It's going to go bankrupt. So you borrow all the stock, you have the broker sell it at 13 and now they're holding that at $13 a share. Now you're leveraged to the hilt, by the way, also, because you're so positive this is going to absolutely happen. Now, a whole bunch of guys who really like GameStop, GameStop because they play video games are on a website and they start saying these guys who are shorting this, they find out have shorted it more than the available stock that exists. They have somehow borrowed more shares than are existing in the market. That's a whole nother story. But trust me, it's true. They did it. And it was, it was noticed by the by these by these guys on this little website called Wall Street Bets at uh, at uh, uh, online. And so they they basically said, OK, we are going to fight back. I am encouraging all of my friends out there online here who are part of this Wall Street bets that we're going to we're going to go in and buy this stock and we're going to create what's called a short squeeze. 
And what a short squeeze is, is that the short seller has to replace the stock. Remember, they got to replace the stock. So if the stock is going up and up and only up, and let's say it starts at 13 and goes to 20 and then to 26. And now the short seller is looking at this and saying, holy smokes, if I have to buy this stock back right now, I'm going to lose a tremendous amount of money. I've got to buy it back at 26 and hand it over and get paid 13. So I'm going to lose half my money. I don't want to do that. So they're going to wait because I know I'm right. And the stock, because these guys are driving it by just tons of these little investors, the stock goes to 52. Now this guy's going to lose three quarters of his money or something. It's a huge amount of money. And then it goes to 100, then to 200, then to 300. And somewhere in here, the broker starts to panic because the broker's responsible for any losses that the hedge fund who shorted that position can't pay. If that hedge fund can't pay, then the broker pays. And since the Securities Exchange Commission knows that, there's a regulatory agency that is watching this closely for all brokers. They step in and say, hey, you better get another three billion dollars in the door. Or we're going to close you down. So then all kinds of fan hits the stuff, right? It's, it's quite, quite entertaining, actually, when you're sitting outside of it, quite scary if you're on the inside of it and you're a hedge fund and really would piss you off so bad if you happen to be long this stock and all of a sudden people couldn't buy it anymore, which is kind of what happened. So you, the, all of that is out there. You guys can read about it, Google it all. But essentially, when you get squeezed as a short seller, you can be absolutely demanded to pay up and your broker can make you pay. And that's what caused one hedge fund effectively to lose about eight billion dollars in a matter of a month. It's just unbelievable how bad things can get. Now, let me tell you where we sit on short selling. First off, it is a really interesting indicator that there's a problem in this company. It doesn't mean you shouldn't own the business, but it is absolutely interesting that there's so many people who are relatively intelligent who think it's got to go down. So I'm going to encourage you guys to take a look at a website. I don't have any interest in this website, but I just use it from time to time called highshortinterest.com. I'm just looking over at it here. Highshortinterest.com. And there's a list of the major companies that are being shorted right now in the market. And number one on the list is GameStop. All right. Now, why would people short that? Because it's the business plan isn't any better than it was in January. It's still a miserably difficult business to try to try to manage to make work. Um, the second one on the list right now is Tanger Factory Outlet Centers. I wonder why these guys are sh have such a large short position, right? Why would you borrow stock in Tanger Factory Outlet Centers? I don't know much about that company, but why would you borrow stock and hope that it'll go down? Well, because Meiji, the factory outlet centers in an age of COVID are having a really bad time. And this one in particular may not be able to make it. It might have to go bankrupt to protect itself, in which case the stock goes to zero. You get to buy back the stock for zero and hand the stock over and get the money that you sold it for earlier. So another one that's interesting is Academy Sports and Outdoors Incorporated, ASO. This is one that that web, uh, Wall Street bets is focusing on a bit and just trying to drive the stock against the short seller. So it's an interesting game. Where do we stand on it? I rarely if I, I have shorted some companies, but I rarely do it. And the reason is really simple. You could have something come like this out of left field and drive the stock up. What is not this isn't very typical, but what does happen tip often, not typically, but often is that the stock price is going down, 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 and the company becomes a bargain for some other company. They come in and say, well, you know, you're on your way to bankruptcy, but we'll buy you. And they come in and swoop the company up. Well, it doesn't happen overnight. And as soon as they start making uh, like some kind of interest in like we're going to buy this company, the stock price turns around and starts going up like crazy. And then you got to hustle in and buy it back before you get in a short squeeze. So we really don't. Plus, we don't like to short company just emotionally. I don't like to be on the side that's saying, I hope you fail. I'm, I'm a guy that kind of likes to hope you win. Right. I like I like to feel good about the places I've got my money. I like to have my money where my mouth is. I like to have my money where my heart is. I like to have my money in things I want to see improve in the future. It's 
it's difficult for me just based on kind of what who I am to be short. Now, this doesn't mean that people who are short sellers are bad people, far from it, but although they're accused of being bad people all the time, I know great people who shorted companies from time to time. And there's a place for that. There's a reason why we like to have short uh, players in the market. And the number one reason is the same reason that you need predators um, in order to have healthy herds, right? So for example, when the wolves were nearly wiped out, it hurt the elk herds in Yellowstone because they got fat and, and, and ate up everything there was, and then they would starve to death. There were just too many elk. Um, so they reintroduce the wolves and they get a much more balanced ecology. Well, the same sort of thing happens here, although it's not about overeating, it's about companies existing in the market that are fraudulent, or they're complete failures, but nobody knows it yet, or they're fads that shouldn't exist. In other words, we need wolves out there to keep the playing field truthful. And there are guys out there who sniffed out some amazing fraudulent companies that uh, were coming in, for example, from China, and I've, I've kind of warned you about this in the past, is be very, very careful with companies that are outside the United States because we don't have the same level of regulation on the numbers that they produce. So these guys sniffed out some really, really phony numbers and, and uh, made a fortune in shorting those companies. But I'll tell you what, that's its own level of expertise. Uh, I, I just rather spend my time looking for something wonderful that I can own forever rather than constantly looking for something that's gonna be a failure. So that's, that's the major reasons I don't do it. Now, I do take short positions. I don't short sale stocks, but what I do do is I take a short position on an option. In other words, I'm the guy who's acting as the insurance company. If you want to sell that stock at a lower price than today, I might be the guy that's saying, if you'll pay me a dollar a share, I will ensure that if the stock price goes down, I'll buy it from you. Now, I'm short, right? I, I, I've I've sold the option and I'm now obligated to purchase the stock at a set price. You see the difference? It's really quite a difference in an attitude. My attitude with the short sale of a put option is I want to own that company at that price. I want to get that discount. And I'm more than happy to ensure you that you can get out at that set price that we agree on. So for example, if Whole Foods is selling for $38 a share back before Amazon bought it. Um, I put in put options at $30 a share. I'm, I'm very happy to snap up Whole Foods all day long at 30 bucks. And people paid me very well to do that. So I'm interested in owning Whole Foods at 30, 38 a little high. Amazon came in and bought them out at 42, so I should have bought it at 38. But I was looking to get the stock with a big margin of safety and happy to sell put options or go short those put options in order to make that happen. Completely other side of the playing field. I like to be a guy who owns companies, not a guy who's hoping they'll fail. All right, with that, you guys, I'd love to hear from you. Have you ever shorted a stock? And what was your experience like, right? You borrow that stock, hit the short, hit the sell button. That's all you gotta do, actually, to short a stock. Hit the sell button, done. So leave a comment below with your answer. I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching, you guys. Now go play. If you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about the big problem with shorting, just hit the like button and please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, you guys subscribe to my channel. I got all kinds of stuff out there. And don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. Thanks again for watching.